Hello and a very warm welcome to the Late Breaking F1 podcast presented by Harry Eid, Sam Sage and me, Ben Hocking on what is absolutely definitely not, but we're claiming it is episode 300 of the podcast. We, we didn't take into account the qualifying review that we were doing at the weekend. We're so. like the Williams F1 team. We didn't number we it. We didn't number it. It's fine. We just, it's a non-numbered episode. So this is episode 300. <laughs> Kirsten's going to do an echo on that. Well, she's promised it. It'd be really funny if she didn't now. She will. <laughs> she'll, she'll do it to mug me <laughs> off. Mug me off. <laughs> Yeah, or and just she'll get on a different fired. word. Oh yeah, that'd be, it'd be funny if she's put it on mugged me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's definitely done that now. Yeah. If she's worked out how to do it, then that's what. If she hasn't worked out at all, then she's mugged herself off. <laughs> Additionally, this is going out like very quickly after we record this as well. So we're not giving her much time at all. Anyway, we are claiming it's episode 300. Welcome along to the ride, everyone. It's a Belgium preview. So <laughs> the... F- Final race before the summer break happens. Harry's excited. Making I'm, weird I'm excited. Dr. Zoidberg noises. It's great to hear his contribution when he turns up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't shut him down when he's here. You're welcome. I appreciate that's rich given I wasn't here for the last one, but here we are. Um, yeah, Belgium preview. Uh, we're going to start with the gap at the front because... Red Bull were pretty good on Sunday. That's that's my review of the race. If you were missing that from Sunday's episode, they were pretty good. Uh, Max Verstappen won the race by 33 seconds. Biggest win of the year, as Sam correctly mentioned on the episode on Sunday. So, Thanks, Dad. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> well, Such validation when he says it's right. Obviously, the satisfaction son. I get out of it when he goes, <laughs> Sam is right. <laughs> Endless. It's like your teacher giving you a good mark. Honestly, that was the positive end of it. The other end of it was me screaming at you that it was definitely Jeddah 2021 that's out, that was uh, Hamilton's last poll. Can't win them all. Well, yeah, exactly. You can't, can't win Kirsty them all. Kirsty messaged us the right answer, didn't she? That's what we're, <laughs> she we're a team for a reason. <laughs> Which was completely out of context for me, and I didn't know what you were talking about because obviously I was, uh, I was not there. But anyway, there was a question in this somewhere. Do we think that the gap is going to be larger or smaller than what we saw at Belgium? Sam, what do you think? It's going to be much smaller, mate. It's going to be so much, much smaller. smaller. Yeah, Williams are coming. Oh, they are coming. The rocket ship has left. You, know? well, you seem to think Verstappen's not going to win. Uh, well, we'll get onto that later on because it might be a certain prediction of mine. But um, that makes sense. I mean, in terms of actual raw pace, if we're going to talk about whether he, he does win or not win, um, I actually do think it's going to be smaller. I think Hungary was such a perfect track for Red Bull, for the team, and especially for the Verstappen drives. It's very much on the nose, very much chucking the car into the corners. Um, it suits every characteristic of their car. And then you model that up with the fact that drivers like George Russell, Carlos Sainz were so far back at the start and it's a hard track to overtake on, so they have less time to catch up as well. I really do think there's going to be less errors taking place. Plus with the sprint coming through, I do think there's going to be more time in both races, of course, now it doesn't influence the qualifying, for drivers just to kind of get used to the track, get used to the order, make sense of how things are working, how their cars operate. So by the time we get to Sunday, what day is race day? Sunday. Wednesday. That's not helpful. That's the wrong answer. Good one, mate. You're welcome. Yeah, well done. More valued input. (laughs) Good um, once we get to Sunday, they're going to be so adept at the race that I think that realistically, mistakes are going to be an absolute minimum unless you get absolutely belted into by someone. And Nick DeVries isn't on the grid anymore. Oh, come so- on. He's, he's had enough. <laughs> he's really, already gone. He's, he's already, already dead. dead. There we go. Good. Um, so well, I genuinely do think that it's going to be closer. And I think actually, weirdly, despite them being so incredibly slow for the first half of this season so far, McLaren are going to see a lot of benefit from their complete lack of drag now. I think the Mercedes engine is good. Um, and I think the Ferrari engine is also very strong and they've been very potent on a Saturday. Just not able to really take that final step. So I do think that the Hungara ring, which was by far the worst race of the season so far, I think with only 16 actual overtakes made across the entire Grand Prix, which is half of what was done the year before. Um, I just don't think it could be worse than that. I do not think it could be further away from that. I will be proved wrong because that's the nature of this game and that's how bad I am at this, but I do not think that Max Verstappen will win by more than 33 seconds. I've got to admit, I, I watched the highlights of the race. Rather Lucky than you, the mate. Race. I, well, well, I was sat there thinking, th- th- these are the highlights? Oh, yeah. What, what were the bits I missed? Do you know how hard like, it was? Hung over to come up with an actually interesting schedule and then talk about it for an hour. We, oh, we, we dragged an hour. We struggled through. Oh, yeah. You're anyway. welcome. 
Thank you. Harry, over to you. Do you think that the gap will be smaller, as Sam suggests? I bloody open it is. Like, crikey. Play <laughs> use F1 Lord. Um, yeah, I do think it'll be smaller. I know, Sam, I know, and that proves how wrong I am, but I was quite surprised at how big the gap was in Hungary. I thought it was going to be smaller. I smashed it last week, apart from the actual predictions. <laughs> yeah, well, not your actual The analysis prediction. that I came up with was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, agreed. Fully agreed. That's another compliment twice. Oh, look at me go. 300th episode. We're all full of the compliments. It's a happy day. Can't wait for the return. I'll tell you what we haven't done before you get to your point. We haven't pre-checked all the Discord submissions, so that's going to be fun when we oh. come to it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we'll be playing them live. <laughs> oh, no. Good start. Well, we'll just have to play all of them. Yep. And cut whoever's rubbish out. Sorry, guys, if you don't hear yourself. Oh, dear. I can't believe we've, we've never we've done never that. never, ever done that. I blame Kirsty. Anyway, back to your point. I've um, yeah, so I, I was surprised at how big it was in Hungary, uh, given... Given that circuit, I know it plays to the strength of Red Bull, given the corners, but I also thought that the likes of uh, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes, who were there in qualifying, even McLaren, thought they were going to be closer than that in the race, but obviously they weren't. I think it will be smaller here in Spa, but I don't think it's going to be that much smaller. Um, I mean, unless unless it's a you know safety car into the race, that sort of thing. But I mean, it's going to rain. It's going to rain, which give me 2021 PTSD. If we have PTSD. no race, I'm going to crawl into a ball and cry. Heck of a way to... It's like they've moved it to the beginning of the summer break now because they're like, well, it won't rain then. And if, yeah. And if it is rubbish, at least when we kickstart the new season, it should be good. New half of the season. Half the season, yeah. You know what I'm on about. I'm on, yeah. So I think it will be smaller. Um, you're right in that Ferrari were pretty pretty good at high speed. High speed. I'm thinking of Baku, although they're not very similar tracks. But where, where engine straight. power has been a bit more prevalent. Bahrain, um, Bahrain, Silverstone. Correct. Um, McLaren were there, so I'm hopeful that the gap will be smaller. That being said, he's probably still going to win, isn't he? I mean, I don't think he will, but we'll get onto that. Sure. I couldn't tell you where the smart money is. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think overall. Hungary wasn't actually as dissimilar to Silverstone than what it seems. So Silverstone, Max Verstappen won. Hungary, Max Verstappen won. That's the similarity. But obviously the gap was vastly different. So we had 33 seconds at Hungary. We only had, I think, three and a half seconds separating the uh, two drivers at the front at Silverstone. So um, the safety car that came out right before the end of the race. In Silverstone. Well, ex- yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... That's my point, is that I don't oh, yeah. actually think pace-wise... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I promise it happened. Oh, yeah. um, pace-wise, I don't actually think there was too much separating them. I think where where you've got Hungary, Max Verstappen obviously made a great start. He was leading after turn one. And from there, he was just able to dictate the race by himself. Like He didn't have anything to worry about. There were no safety cars. There were no virtual safety cars. As, as far as I'm aware, there might have been like one yellow flag that appeared all day. Like Logan, would... Logan gave it a good go. Yes. Yeah, he liked to do the old spinneroo. Nicholas Latifi from Wish. <laughs> oh, that is horrible. Oh, man. Logan wouldn't get into business school. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm joking. I just mean he's not as good as causing a late race safety car than Nicholas Latifi is. He has got, he has got previous on that one. <laughs> he's got an advantage there. Didn't mean his um, skills. Point being, Max Verstappen could kind of just do whatever he wanted to out front. And I think the 33 second gap, whilst it was it was thoroughly impressive, I wouldn't have been surprised if at Silverstone or at some other races this year, if it had gone the same sort of way in terms of safety cars and virtual safety cars, it probably would have ended up being very similar. Um, and Spa, I wouldn't be surprised either way, whether it's bigger or smaller, which is incredibly worrying given how big it was already. But Spa was a great track for Max Verstappen and indeed Red Bull last year. Um, as I'm sure anyone who watched last year will remember, Verstappen started P14, was in the lead after about two corners, uh, and then <laughs> ended up winning by nearly 20 seconds, I think it was. It was I have written that. 18 seconds he won by. Um, and Sergio Batman. Perez was nine seconds clear of third place as he finished second. So it wasn't just a great day for Max Verstappen. It was a great day for Red Bull as a collective. So if they're anywhere close to that level of dominance again, it's going to be a good afternoon for Red Bull. The um, the slipstream down into Oruj Rayon Complex and then down to the old Kemmel, it's pretty honking, isn't it? It's pretty gross. It's uh, honking. Honestly, honking. vile. Honking. Stinks. <laughs> Without an H. Yeah, honking. literally. Honk, honk. 
Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, and I think there's going to be some chaos. Okay. Not there's no race. <sighs> I mean, it's still chaos thing, isn't there? Yeah, true. Different kind but of you chaos. do mention, of course, it is a sprint weekend. So if there oh. is rain, I, I, I seem to think there might be rain earlier in the weekend, which if it affects the one and only practice session, that could be quite interesting. That's fun. I as uh, the, uh, the thing I like the most about sprint race weekends is how little practice they get on the actual track. So if it is written off by wet weather, they're we'll having a field day. So, I mean, we had rain in the last sprint race and Sam deemed it the greatest thing to ever happen to humanity. Have we sorted the order of the sessions out this time? Have hey, we said I'm, I'm that- prepared this time. Have they I'm actually prepared. gone sprint qualifying, sprint race, normal qualifying, normal race yet? Are we still doing it the stupid no, way? No, no, no. We're practice qualifying for the Grand Prix sprint shootout sprint race. Yeah. So it's, okay. That. Forget these silly names. Qualifying, qualifying, race, race. Qualifying yeah. shootout. Shoot. You came for a shootout. How how have they got this wrong still? How is this still the order of how things are happening? That's so, break them into two separate segments of this is everything sprint, this is everything race. It's banner, isn't it? It's bad. I'll tell you what, I've got a good idea. What's that, mate? Do it. <laughs> Let's not do it. Oh, <laughs> remember how good qualifying has been recently? Oh, yeah. That's a really good point, that, yeah. Stella it was. On Saturday last, last week, it was so good. Andrea Stella. Andrea Stella. Absolutely Stella. Andrea Stella. It was. He deserves a little ching ching to that because honestly, fan dabby dozy. <laughs> and I swear this wasn't planned. What's is a neat segue into a McLaren topic here. Oscar Piastri. He's been close to the podium on a couple of occasions. He was within the fight at Silverstone. Definitely in the fight again at Hungary, at least for the first half of that Grand Prix. Sam can he get the podium this time? Is it going to be third time lucky? Um, I mean, it's highly possible. He's putting in a good shift since he's had the upgrade, since he's been given the car, which Lando, of course, got the race before in Austria. He has turned up every time he's been asked to. I do think he was slightly lacking in comparison to his teammate over the whole race weekend on um, at Hungary uh, last week out because... He had such a blinder of a start and he gets himself into second place. You've got to remember, he was the second of the two McLarens at the starting lineup. So he beat Lando for line, beats Lewis Hamilton into turn one, right up behind Max Verstappen. And the fact that Lando manages to engineer the undercut, so he jumps him, and then he burns through those hard tyres. He's not happy on them for the whole race. Wants to get off them as soon as possible. And then the mediums, he doesn't seem to be able to match the pace of Lando again. He's on them for too long. Hamilton and Perez both catch him it all kind of slipped away. But the first 10, 15% of the race really was Stella, Andrea Stella. So if he could do that, but over the whole course of the Grand Prix, I have no doubt in my mind that a podium is very much within, you know, clinching distance for him. He just needs to string it together over a nice, safe, comfy weekend. What percentage chance would you give him of being on the podium? At Spa, I would say he's got at least a 50% chance of a podium. So about as likely as it is not likely. Yeah, I mean, with all the competition yeah. around and the fact that Belgium is so, you know, bipolar with its layout, the fact that each sector is almost like a different racetrack, it's going to favour different cars. And I do feel like McLaren as a team are still a bit of an unknown quantity, entity, whatever you want to call it, for what they provide on a race weekend, because they were good at Silverstone, which as much as it's got some similar corners to Hungary, it is a very different type of racetrack. One is very much more power-based, one is very much more aerodynamic and chassis-based, and yet they thrived at both. So I don't really know how they're going to feature when we've got an outright, almost Monza-esque power section where it is just foot to the floor, how much power can you carry through? I don't know if they're going to lose out there. So if the car performs well... I do think that he could really deliver. If the car is, you know, in the mix with Aston Martin, with Ferrari, with Mercedes, I don't think he is in the top, you know, 50% of drivers from those teams and would not secure the podium. So if that's, for example, Mercedes are equal, McLaren are equal, Ferrari are equal, Aston Martin are equal for this race. I think Hamilton and Russell would beat him to a podium. I think Leclerc would beat him to a podium. I think Alonso would beat him to a podium. I think on a very good day, Sainz would probably beat him to a podium. And I'm not going to include Lando because I think he... Or he's already being ahead on both races. I think the only person he'd likely beat is Stroll. So I think he needs something to go either wrong or he needs that car to really be performing to get himself on the podium here at Spa. Do you foresee a cheeky podium for Piastri, Harry? Cheeky. Cheeky. Or cheeky podium. Um, yeah, I'm with Sam. I think things uh, need to fall into place outside of his control. And that isn't a criticism of Piastri because I've, I've been very impressed with him in the past two races. 
but the, the, the kid's still learning. Yeah. Um, I think learning not necessarily over one lap, but over a race distance, just how to manage that. I think that was evident in, in Hungary, maybe not so in, in, in Silverstone, but I just think the way he went about his race in Hungary, there's obviously still, which is totally fair. He's, it's year one. He's allowed to do that. So yeah, maybe a little bit of luck needs to be involved for Piastri this weekend to get a podium, especially if we think it's going to be slightly closer than it has been with the rest of the, uh, well, rest of that behind Red Bull field. Um, but I, it's not off the cards. I do think he's got it, the, it sounds silly, the right way around though. I think his Saturday performances are already yeah, there. He's in the race, isn't right? he? He's, he's not doing, sorry Perez, but he's not doing what Perez is doing, having to cut through the field with a car that is capable, but giving himself almost a handicap at the start. I'd rather you get Saturday right and then develop your tyre yeah, management in your race pace. Got the raw pace in the yeah. last thing. You can learn the rest of that. So, um, and Spa might be entirely different and probably more like Silverstone. So that's probably going to help him in that respect. I think it'll be less tyre management than there was at, at Spa, uh, than at Hungary, sorry. You know what compounds they're bringing to Spa? Ben, do you have any ideas? I don't know if Tom had I mean, if it's dry, then that fair, it'll play a part. If it's a wet weekend, then I guess it doesn't really round make a ones. difference. Yeah, the ones that can go on a car will be Yeah, good. round rubbery ones. Um, good point, that. So, not other question for Piastri, but uh, I, like I said, I don't think it's a shameful thing if he doesn't get a podium because the kid's still learning. The kid. The kid. Like an old man. You are an old kid. man now, apparently. Yeah. Our kid, Oscar. Our kid, yeah. <laughs> He, yeah, I mean, the last couple of races have been very encouraging. I think Hungary, I think it was a very specific issue at Hungary. Uh, issue might even be too strong of a word, but I think his relative lack of pace versus Lando Norris, it did seem to be specific to Hungary. We'll see what happens when he turns up at Belgium, of course, but I, at Silverstone, it was much, much closer between the two drivers. So we'll have to see what it's like here at Belgium, which is really the third opportunity that both drivers have had with an upgraded car. It's firstly absolutely maddening that we are discussing McLaren in the fight for a podium at Spa. I think like six weeks ago, we just mentioned to McLaren that they probably shouldn't bother turning up at Monza and Spa this year. Just give it a miss given how slow they were in a straight line. And now we're talking about a track that is got a lot of straight lines in it. And we're saying, yeah, they could be very competitive. They could very well be second best team. Um, I have the same line of thinking. I think it's, it's probably more unlikely than it is likely he ends up on the podium just because of other drivers around. And it would only take one of... Um, it would only take one of Mercedes or Ferrari or Aston Martin to get it right. And then suddenly you've got about five or six cars in the mix for that podium. But certainly if he can pull off another solid, consistent, let's say fifth place, fourth place, it's more than enough at this point in his career. So yeah, I encouraging. Bold predictions. Bold. Bold. Good. We're aligned. I'm not happy with Piastri. I know you referenced it on the pod. I'm not happy oh, with him. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a fair point. You got that wrong, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. What do you write off, mate? Well done, Oscar. <laughs> I need that. What have you got for us this week, Sam? Well, I've, I've declared mine publicly. Max Verstappen yeah. will not win the race. The main race, the feature race. And I'm leaving it at a one-parter, thank you. So go on. Good, cool. Add another part. No, I had too many parts. Go on, mate. So three hundred. Yeah. You love a you love a two parter. Go yeah, on. Yeah, I'm on three hundred. I'm gonna I'm gonna mop the floor with it. Go I'm on. taking it all over. Three hundred parter. Three hundred points coming my way. More like that's not how that works. <laughs> no, it's quite how that no. works. <laughs> Would be good though. One if you're lucky. Well, I'll take that. And <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of luck so far. <laughs> got no luck. So Max Verstappen will not win the race, according to Sam Sage. Harry, what yeah. are you saying? I'm going for Albono. No, I'm not going for Albono, but I'm going for a Williams in the top five. Now that's pretty bold. Love that. That's two for two on Big Bold. You're welcome. That's Big Bold. That's a 300th episode turnout so far. Smashing it. Don't let us down. Don't let us down, Ben. Don't let us down, Ben. Don't let us down, Ben. <laughs> Deflate him. Fucking <laughs> 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 air, Ben. I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going pretty bold here as well. Come on. Here we go. The first half of this is not going to sound very bold. First half? Well, it's only one thing, but the first half of the sentence will make it sound like it's not that bold. Fine. So I think Max Verstappen is going to win by over 20 seconds. Okay. With a late pit stop for the fastest lap. Banter. Um, can I get a clarification on how late is late, please? 
Oh, uh, last last five laps. All right, cool. Thank you. I like that. My, my point is, I think he will be dominant enough to win it's by, like say, 40 second. or 45 seconds. Yeah, it's a minimum 40 second lead. Because obviously with, yes. with five lap old soft tyres, which you put on, you would definitely pull out at least a second a lap again. Yeah, so my, my point is, I think he will be more dominant than he was at Hungary. But I also don't want to say he'll win by 40 seconds because at that point, he'll probably just pit and then get the uh, yeah. fastest lap and I'll be... So I'm covering myself off against that eventuality. So me and Ben are on the complete opposite end of the scale. We cannot get a trio of points on the 300th episode. Well, 301st it'll be, but you know. True. Yeah. It will be difficult for Max Verstappen to win by over 20 seconds and simultaneously not win the race. What if he wins the sprint race by over 40 seconds with the pit stop and whatever it might be, and then he doesn't win the main race? Well, that... I mean, don't get me wrong, it'd be an incredible point. I don't... I'm talking about the main race as right, well. Right, main race. So, okay, okay. Yeah. I was just trying to give you an opening there, Ben. But you right. know that he, that's going to happen in the sprint. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. No, he won't if, win the sprint and then he will... Oh, no, wait, it doesn't matter. We're doing the same thing. I'm, I'm just talking rubbish. <laughs> Honestly. If he wins out my mouth. the sprint race by over 20 seconds with an attempt at a fastest lap point <laughs> that doesn't exist... <laughs> What are you doing, mate? In, in an 11-lap race, I, really respect I might it. leave the sport. I, I might, might just say I'm done with might it. might crown point. him the greatest, actually, of all time. 11 laps. If he's four and a bit seconds faster. A stupid amount of laps 11. for a race. It's like it's like when you just pick up Grand Prix on the F1 game. You're like, just fancy a quick race. I'll do a five-lapper. I'll just do 11 laps today. <laughs> I'm on 25%. doesn't even make sense, 11. Right, here's my favourite part of this whole podcast. What's that, mate? Pole, sprint, pole, <laughs> sprint, win, one, two, three. God damn it, F1. Right, Sam, what are you going for? I'm going to make it real easy to start with. Verstappen, 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 right? Get that out of the way. And Fifth then, pick. yeah, piece of cake. Now the actual race, win. Rice. Lando Norris. <laughs> Fish cake. Fish cake. <laughs> Rice cake. Win Lando Norris. Second place, Lewis Hamilton. Third place, George Russell. Blimey, what a British race. bias! <laughs> well, apart from the Verstappen bit, but sure. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, but in all that, that's not the main race. Don't care. Yeah, Don't okay, care. fair enough. Harry, what are you going for? Verstappen times four. Good. Is that loud? Yeah. Nice, and, nice and easy. You're welcome. Second and third. <laughs> second and third. <laughs> Verstappen. Verstappen. No, yeah. um, I'm going to go for Perez in second. He's and then back. third place, I'm going to go for... Chucky look lucky. Oh, Chuckles McMichaels is back. Oh, shall. Oh, shall. He'll probably pit for a fastest lap and get demoted seven spots. But <laughs> by Alonso. Um, Another penalty. I have got pole position going to Lando Norris. I've got what? sprint pot. Well, I just had to put something in there that wasn't Verstappen. <laughs> yeah, I respect it. Banner. Pole Lando Norris, which he leads for one corner exactly <laughs> the sprint chemistry pole, Max Verstappen sprint win Max Verstappen winner of the actual race Max Verstappen second place Sergio Perez third place Lando Norris oh, I so hope I am right in that main race so many Verstappens okay folks we're going to run through who our under pressure is for the Belgian Grand Prix and we've then also got some submissions from Discord <laughs> that are for a 300th special this was definitely planned completely <laughs> uh, they're completely live validated <laughs> um, yeah very interesting who's under pressure for you Sam uh, I've gone big Logan Corporal Ooh. under pressure for me he if, needs a result he needs a result at this point you know he, he absolutely flopped himself over the curbs in Hungary <laughs> <laughs> and Albon, even in a car that didn't suit that racetrack, did had a really good race. He didn't score points, but he was very competitive. You know, one DNF, you know, up the road, and he might have snuck in there with a bit of a fight. Sargent's just not been near him so far, and we're, we're back at a track that, in theory, they could get something out of that. We saw it previously, right, last year, the choo-choo train of Alex Albon and that Williams, which was worse than this year's one in comparison to the field. He held up so many people for so long. He was doing such a great job. I really do feel like a Williams in the points isn't off the cards. Sergeant's got to make himself that that guy. He's got to be that guy. He cannot keep falling to 17th, 18th, 17th, 18th, while Albon is 8th, 9th, 10th. You know, it's not a good look. And I know he's in his rookie year, but at some point, you've got to get a bit closer. You've got to start levelling up. So Sergeant for me is under pressure. Does he just need to be in the fight for points, do you think? Or if if Albon got 10th and he got 11th, I'd be happy. Yeah, okay. Um, Harry, who have you got? 
I've then not a, a person, they're a team, but I've gone for Aston Martin. Oh well. Could yes. do with a result, couldn't they? Uh, Could do with, if they want to want to stay in this uh little top three fight that Merca well, beating them in at the moment and Ferrari and Macca chomping at the bit. Well, Ferrari are just well, chasing their own tail at the moment, aren't they? They're being dragged along by McLaren. Literally. Um, I think their points are going down. <laughs> minus points. I think so. <laughs> it's punishment. Um, but yeah, I think they could do... I think Hungary, I think, shocked them a little bit. So... Oh! Yeah. Do it again. Yikes! Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Um, so I think they could do with the result this weekend. I'm not done bashing Alpine, ah, now, I'm afraid. Here we go. Um, Le Plan. Bit of Alpine bashing. Uh, Alpine. They could do with a result as well, they to be really fair. Could. They could really do with a result. Race 41. Just do more than a lap. I appreciate they have got nearly another three seasons left until we get to race 100. <laughs> so it's maybe not that much under pressure. But I think they could do with a result. Um, I think the Belgian Grand Prix, um, this didn't really get much traction during the off-season. But I do remember now... Otmar was actually smug about this race specifically. Uh, Finally, Nixon. we're here. Yes. Um, so double retirement in Hungary, which admittedly neither car did anything wrong, but double retirement in Hungary, not good. Um, Gasly's had back-to-back retirements. Again, admittedly, not his fault either, but not good either. Um, and McLaren are now 40 points clear. So that's pretty much them gone. So never mind. Bye. <laughs> and I w- managed to work this out earlier. I actually tweeted this. I was so happy with this stat. Oh, yeah, I saw this. They have had just one point in the last three races, which is the worst run for that team, if we're also including Renault, since the back end of 2016 and the start of 2017. That's, that's a the long worst time ago. Three race stretch. Who, what was their lineup for that ra- those races, please, Ben? Oh, well, it was Jolien Palmer. And well, okay, Mag- Magnuson and, and then Hulk. Hulkenberg. It's good, isn't it? Solid lineup. Yeah. Would you argue it's better than the lineup they've got now? No. no. Make use of it. Otmar lap an hour. Get a lapping, son. <laughs> so, Might yeah, um, some That's points awful. would be all right, Alpine. Have a think about it. Just finish. It might be good. Honestly, as an F1 driver, it must be so frustrating to do two Grand Prix and not get a single lapping. Like, Gasly's got to be absolutely kicking himself. Well, it's not even his fault, but you know what I mean? You think, oh, it's like going to a theme park and both days not getting on a ride once. I know they retired in Silverstone, but I can't remember why. Stroll. Yeah, you also can't remember there was a safety car, so I'm not trusting your memory. Sleep? What happened? Well, when Stroll went and just decided to bash in the side of him, that happened, didn't it? Yes. Ah, yes. Literally drove off the track and they drove straight. Yeah, neither is fault. Correct. He was actually having a really good race. Yeah, good stuff. Now, we obviously don't have any idea what our Discord submissions are this time out, so <sighs> oh, let's no. give it a go. This is a worry. There's names here I don't recognise either. Anyway, first up, 47 seconds. God. Oh, you might right. be out already. Hybrid. Well, they're in. Hybrid <laughs> ship <laughs> 982. Works. No, it doesn't. Okay. Brace yourselves, everyone. Here we go. Hey, guys. Hybrid ship 984 here. I should have apologized. Why is your name 982? Name it's got his name wrong. That's ridiculous. Right, I'll start that again. Hey, guys. Hybrid ship 984 here. I should apologize for the absence of hybrid ship 982, what? but he was having some glitches what? and he is currently in the basement undergoing some repairs. <laughs> it's like the anyway, what? the most under pressure for this week is going to be Yuki Sonoda because after such a powerful race result from Daniel Ricciardo, with that being he hasn't been in a car for eight months and outdoes his teammate like that on the first try, that's some pretty compelling stuff stuff right there and then even with the powerful drivers that are just waiting if they're ever even selected to drive a formula one car in the junior formula program it's um yeah it's it's looking pretty sketchy for sonoda i'm not gonna lie sketchy sonoda sketchy sonoda i can't express how much i love that he missed out a number (laughs) like he didn't obvious would have gone to 983 but he went to 984 what three's doing Got him. Don't, don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the other 981 are doing. I'm curious. Please write us and let us know. Write us a letter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next up, Brown 30. Hey guys, Brown 30 with submission number two. Under pressure this week, I would say is Kevin Magnuson. He really needs to do something in this race to Just pull him out something. of this rut that he's in. Um, Hulkenberg is making him look really bad. And Magnuson is actually one of my favorite drivers on the grid. Keep up the great work, guys. Join the Discord. 
Love that. Little, Love little. That. Did you see what um, the news that came out about Magnussen this week? When he doesn't go and drive the car, he just copies Hulkenberg's setup. I mean, fair. Doesn't it's work worth, very well for him, does it? Well, it works for Hulkenberg. Yeah. <laughs> not, not for him, though. No. That's like me saying, I forgot how to wear trousers. Harry, can I have your trousers? And they'll just fall down because <laughs> you're bigger than me. That wouldn't work. No. I like... <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> Stop wearing your dad's shoes. I forgot on my shoes. Dad, can I have your shoes? I'm a child size three, I, dad's a size I 10. I have very big feet, actually. Uh, I enjoyed that Brown 30 was there with his number two. Yep. There you go. Oh, brown poop. Yeah. All good always. <laughs> Highly oh. breaking. Congratulations on your 300th episode. That is so exciting. And three is my lucky number. So <gasps> this episode is definitely going to be a good one. Um, under pressure, I guess the Alpines. I mean, Very. what happened in the last race? I mean, of course, it technically wasn't their fault, but I mean, they haven't been good this season. <laughs> so right yeah. pressure's definitely on. Love you guys on the podcast. Bye. Love you. Three. Three. <laughs> My favorite number at the moment. Okay, next up, bungers. Hello, my late breaking lines from Crossley, Big Wet. It's your boy in the McLaren C E O. Yeah. Yeah. And the most under pressure for the Belgian Grand Prix is Otmar Safenauer and Alpine. Who and Otmar who has seen Back-to-back weeks, his former protege, Oscar Piastri, absolutely slapped them upside down and sideways. (laughs) And I have to believe that Omar is crying on the inside and crapping his own shorts. (laughs) So, there you go. Happy 300th, boys. Nice. That was bagger. Love you, baggers. Oh, man. It's a very fair point. Otmar's had to watch Fernando Alonso get a lot oh, of podiums at the God. start of the year. Then Alonso starts and then Piastri starts being good. Yeah, <laughs> and he's still bad. You just watch his stroll crashing into Gasly. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, just you wait for race 73 though. Uh, uh, this one is Rogo24. Yes. Hey guys, Rogo24 here. And last submission, I said the word crap and now I guess I'm the crap kid now. <laughs> But seriously, uh, my under pressure for this week Mama. has to be Ted Kravitz. I have a bone to pick with this guy. Oh, Ted. Oh, Ted. So annoying. Ooh. He's always talking about his stupid English delki- delicacies <laughs> of food. It's annoying. <laughs> Crafty's always telling him to shut up. I think he should listen. No one cares about your stupid shepherd's pie. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> So good. As a trio of people who don't like shepherd's pie. Yeah, he was going really on about it a lot. Oh yeah, agree. Ben, were you even, I don't know if you were there for that. Was that the, during the race? Yeah. No, no, no I, I heard shepherd's pie. I was in the, okay. yeah, the build-up. That was quality because ah. he was talking about the tyre allocation. Obviously. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah, obviously it was. Why wouldn't it be? I was oh. doing something different with your shepherd's pie is doing something different with qualifying. Something. Yeah, got it, got it. Got Leave it. the shepherd's pie. Cottage pie. In the shop. Okay. Hazza. <laughs> Right, boys, most under pressure for Spa this weekend. I'm going to give it to Kevin Magnussen. Oh. I mean, the, the geezer can't even get out of Q1 every week. And um, Oldenburg, his teammates, getting into Q3. I mean, it's, it's quite a disparity. And if they keep that up, there's a bit of a pressure-free seat next year. Cheers, boys. Cheers, boys. It's a thing for us. Oldenburg. Born in the East, we just don't use H's at the start of words. Nah, don't exist. No, don't exist. Um, oh, my Lord. A Akirazine. A a Correct. Okay. What's up, guys? This is Austin. And my under pressure this week for the Belgian Grand Prix has got to be Aston Martin, unfortunately. They've had a really rough stretch of it for the last three weeks going back to Austria. And I think Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll have both been expressing some frustration with where the car's at and not being able to find the speed they want to out of it. So Aston Martin's really got to turn it around and see a good performance here in Belgium to get their season back on track. Love you guys. Keep breaking late. Legend. Can I just say before we we get we keep going? These have been good so far. Oh, it's worrying, isn't it? Like we we usually have to be a little bit careful, but you are smashing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sam ruin it. <laughs> Sam told Beef off for being too long, so she's gone for a twenty second one and named it Rapid Beef. I respect it. Hello. Quick recap: Number one went to the races, got very drunk. Number two went to bottomless brunch, got very drunk. Number three 
wrote another essay, slayed it. Number four, <laughs> now got pink hair. Okay, oh. straight on to under pressure. Um, everyone apart from Max Verstappen, just don't let him win, guys. Okay, bye. Look, see, she fitted the whole thing that she normally goes on about for a minute and a half into 20 seconds. I mean, it'd be, you're allowed 30. Yeah, so you've got 10 you, to spare. Breathe, you, woman. Yeah, yeah, chill. There was arguably more content in that one. <laughs> She ums and ahs a lot. Maybe she should dye her pink in that other 10 seconds. Yeah. Well, there you go. Pink beef. Pink beef. Um, it's Jaman. <laughs> <laughs> or J-Man. I don't know. Hey, what's going on? First time submitter. My name is Hello. J-Man hey, from J-Man. Canada. My oh, under man. pressure for the week is Logan Sargent. Here's a little song for him. Oh. Yankee Sargent went to spa oh, riding in his Williams. Came in last and lost his seat. And now Mick... Drives that Williams. Oh, I love it. I love that. <laughs> that is just you that is me all over. Form. Yeah. Driving F1 with F1. It's that <laughs> and Williams and Williams. <laughs> you, honestly, J Man, if I ever die, you've got a job. Wow. If I ever die. I'm- I was going to take a drink whilst that one was going on. I'm glad I did. Glad you didn't, mate. Cheers, J Man. More songs, please. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Deacon Lincoln. Hey guys, congratulations on 300 episodes. Who's Thank under you. pressure? It's oh, whoever makes the trophies because clearly Lando Norris has it out for. Uh, anything that Max Verstappen gets. So I, I hope whoever's putting together the trophy uh, this time around reinforced it or something because I think I think Lando's coming for it. That man has ruined two podiums in a row, isn't he? Yeah. Loves it's, a, him. it's a menace. There's only three left here and we've got through them all safely. And they're all re- have actually been entertaining um, and interesting. Well done, everyone involved. We should do it live more often. Uh, next up, Black Flags Matter. Hello, this is Danny from North Carolina in the good old U.S. of A. I'm a first-time submitter and I've listened to y'all for two great seasons. Congratulations on episode number 300. Thanks, Thanks, you. Minor pressure for this week's a two-parter. First is the Ferrari team as a whole. They continue their downward spiral and could find themselves out of the Constructors' top four over the next few races. They need to pick it up and gain some momentum before Monza. Second is Max Verstappen. He has a chance to make history by winning the next few races and passing Seb with number 10 in consecutive wins. Love y'all. Keep breaking late. Danny, I'm going to oh, pay you a compliment now. He has the voice of someone that should be like about to narrating a thing. film or something. It is gorgeous. Got that presenter voice this down. It sounds good. We should take tips. <laughs> yeah. Teach us, please, Danny. Um, Sebalicious is next. Hi, lads. All right. Mine's a pleasure Seb. for Spa Franklin Shots. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Franklin Shots. <laughs> Oh, Frankenstein! <laughs> Shops. <laughs> Books of that. <laughs> Bloody. That's how you that was speak. Worse than me. Right. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Get through this. Just finish your drink first. Let's go. No drinks. Go on, Seb. Here we go. Sorry, Seb. That's my under pressure for Spa Franklin shots. <laughs> is Logan Sergeant slash Williams. Because they're kind. Pretty good. It's okay this year. Yep. And Spa is all about. I like that power, like that power, low aero. So they should do well, right? Are you <laughs> sure? So much yeah, sure. Yeah, it's under pressure. She said, Frank on chomps. Frank and chomps. Yeah. Spa Frank and chomp. <laughs> you know, I can say that one. Right, last one. We've almost done this. You smashed this all, guys. Lion 2129. Don't know what happened to the other two, 2128, <laughs> but anyway. Not another one. Here we go. Hey guys, long time listener. First time submitter. First My time biggest under it. pressure for this week is Harry. Let's well, see I... if he can actually show up for a couple episodes oh, man. in a row. Uh, if... Oh, something's happened. I don't know what it's broken. Ah. <laughs> 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 a compliment. He wants you in. <laughs> Sorry, Lyle. I'll carry on. If not, then uh, we should think about having a Harry Light on the show. <laughs> That's Thank me. you guys. Congratulations for 300 episodes. Appreciate it. You guys yeah. have Harry, smashed you that. can't. You can't celebrate this. You're only on 160. <laughs> I was going to say, me and Beg are made 300. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the 100 race plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on a 300, 300 podcast plan. Yeah, about halfway there. <laughs> podcast 40. We're doing about three this year. Uh, well, thank you, Ron. That, that went remarkably well. Honestly, folks, you wouldn't know this because we do it off air. Listening to them straight away like that was much funnier. Much more enjoyable. It was funny, a bit, it made me a bit nervous. I, I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. It's like, it's the fear, you know. Going on the edge. You're struggling. 